Okay folks, um, here we are. We're going to talk about my Dragonfly today and shockingly there's no airplane to talk about. It's on the other side of that wall in the airplane shed. I am currently in the office that I built for uh, my wife. Um, do all of her cool stuff in and um, the uh, I'm not doing anything with the airplane today. Um, no real reason, just not doing it. Okay, so um, but these are some of the wiring components that I've been gathering uh, so that I can build a harness and get the uh, ECU in, get the all the power wires, the battery connections, the, the all, all of the, the all of the things. So let's start with I'm going to use EFI. This is a P8 Pro um, engine management system built in Britain. UK, whatever. Uh, this actually came out of a race car that did exceptionally well and never had a single problem uh, with this ECU. It's kind of outdated um, technology now for race cars, but it is miles ahead of anything we've got in the uh, airplane world. And uh, this thing, I mean, it was in a British touring car or a couple of different touring cars been beat on, it's been crashed, it always works, there's no problem with it. Uh, you can see here we've just uh, rigged a, um, for this uh, new connector here, I've rigged a power uh, and ground setup so that I can test it. And here's the pins for it. Uh, so we'll put those in. They're just standard, um, you know, ECU pins. It'll be good. So uh, to go with that, um, we have a wideband uh, now these are wideband gauges, but they also output a signal to the ECU which allows it to auto-tune the mixture uh, quite a bit. Um, in addition to that, here we have the MAP sensor uh, for the ECU, the Canon plug, what I call it, um, multi-pin plug, quick disconnect plug, whatever. So this gadget here, really cool comes apart, goes through the firewall. See how easy it comes apart there? This goes through the firewall on this side. See there's the threads right there. And bolts down and allows me to attach all of the wiring and run all of the wiring through the firewall really cleanly and have a one connection disconnect with very little chance of corrosion. Water is not going to matter fuel, any kind of contamination, it's totally sealed and uh, I've used those a lot and I really feel like they're um, the way to go. The biggest problem I see in wiring in other folks home builds is corrosion. And we'll get to we'll come, we'll circle back to that in a minute, but um, I don't like corrosion, I don't want the um, potential of it. So here we have the pins that go in there and they're very nice and they are I think uh, nickel plated so very low corrosion but I also have gold pins um, I'm not sure they're not that bag's not in here uh, but I have gold pins as well and uh, all of the in the entire harness uses that same pin system and you can see there's the connector bodies there um, we have you know, three prong, two prong, four, six, you know, uh, wire connectors so that we can um, make offshoots or whatever we need and keep it really light. Uh, the, the big thing is, is that everything becomes reconfigurable very easily because it's easy to depend these connectors. But most importantly, the stuff's light. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. When you're using it with Tetzel wiring, you just take so much weight out of the wiring and your reliability goes up. So it's a win-win all the way around in my, in my view. Okay, so uh, we also have, you know, um, plat rubber covers for battery stuff. We have big terminals for battery stuff. Um, here we have some switches. Probably saw those as I was panning around earlier. So here we have switches with circuit breakers and these are actually out of my boat. This is a panel that's identical to the panel that's been in my boat since 1994 
it's never had a corrosion problem. The switches always work. Uh, I mean, I know I pulled that panel apart, and those wires are dusty and kind of, you know, they look like they've been in a boat since 1994. But they're not rusty. They're not corroded, and I've never had a problem with with a switch not working. So these are the style switches I'm I choose to use. Um, they're probably about the same cost. I know they're actually the same cost as a lot of the aircraft switches that people want to use. Um, I just prefer this style, and that's what I'm going to use. We also have switches that I think people should not use, um, like these little guys, uh, what I used to call car audio switches or stereo, uh, radio shack switches, whatever. They're probably okay, low voltage stuff. I just want that LED to come on. You know, I don't know what I'd use them for in an airplane, but I wouldn't use them for very much. These are the super solid, really good uh, switches. They're kind of heavy, and they kind of take up. Um, they don't take up any more room than anything else. They're actually kind of compact, but I just don't like them, and they're not lit, which means that I have to run an LED, which is fine. Here we have some battery terminal stuff. Here we have, whoop, there we go, there is the uh, cable end. This is, I don't know why I put that up there, but I, I wouldn't use that in an airplane, but, you know, if you needed, uh, you know, for a jumper pack or something, these compression fittings with, uh, they're cast copper and they're, they're tinned so they don't corrode. The important thing is this compression fitting, once you tighten that down and then you, heat shrink it with any kind, uh, especially if you use the heat shrink with the adhesive in it, you should never have a an issue with uh, corrosion in the battery cables. Now, I have seen battery cables corroded to the point where they're basically falling apart and they look brand new and perfect uh, because the corrosion gets in behind the insulation and uh, and goes to work. So. Rule number one, uh, especially with battery cables, anywhere it's going to be um, damp or it's going to sit for a long time, you may like like an airplane sits on a ramp or whatever. Um, my rule number one would be I want to do everything I can to stop the corrosion, and I want to uh, to make sure that that it just doesn't happen uh, to me. Uh, here's another really bad switch. You see these all the time, CB shops and and whatnot. These are junk. Don't use these. Um, they may never give you any trouble and they look like any other switch that might be on a panel. Um, but I wouldn't use them at all. I think they just, you know, they're just plastic and they fall apart. Don't use those. Alright, so and here's, you know, the lug version of that same connector for the battery. These are probably what I will use. A um, little, little heavier than I'd like, but in a battery terminal heavier is probably better. This is a gold plated, find it there, it is. Uh, there's a gold plated ring terminal uh, that I will use for my contactors and uh, some other um, power distribution. Gold plated, doesn't corrode, um, you know, not, not cheap but works, that's what you need. What I need anyway. I don't know about anybody else, everybody does their own thing, that's why they're, they're home built experimental aircraft but I have two goals in my electrical system. Number one is I want efficiency. I don't want to have a bunch of heat in my system because I got a lot of resistance or anything like that. I want efficiency in the system and I want clean wiring, very light, and most importantly, and I hate you know I don't I don't want to have to deal with corrosion in the system. Those things uh, need to go. These are terminals that I keep in my boat to fix stuff. Uh, when the boat breaks. Um, some of these probably not bad you know um, I've seen pictures of people using these in various applications I would never use these at all in an airplane for anything except an emergency repair to get home so I could fix it right even though these are you know not bad they're they're pretty decent stuff and I certainly would never use any of these wiretap things those are horrible don't use those okay so uh that's my knife left it out there I'll put that back in the pocket uh here's the air fuel ratio meters again 
they're awesome. So this one right here, this is uh, has a digital readout and a LED sweep. This is the classic needle. They do the exact same job. They show the exact same information. They do everything exactly the same. I just happen to have both, and I haven't decided which one I'm going to use for my uh, aircraft yet. And here we have a big bag full of these um, double-sided tape-backed zip-tie gadgets. They're worthless. Although, I think maybe in an airplane with light wiring harnesses or just one or two wires run out somewhere, they're probably okay, but I've never found those things to hold sufficiently. If you can get the ones that rip, that have a rivet hole in the center, um, those are the ones to use. I, those are the ones I use. Uh, they look basically exactly the same, except they have a hole through the center, so you can put a pop rivet in there or um, you know bond it somehow, and then it then they work. Uh, this is just a bunch of stuff. This is an electro box mine. We have LED lights of various types for different things. We have strip light, LED lights, all kinds of lights. More switches, more wire, you know, cheap wiring fits trailer, um, LED bulb holders, and other sort of stuff. There's a set of marine terminal things, which actually probably wouldn't be a bad idea if I had to run a bunch of wires off of a battery, just you know, as a as a backup or something, or not backup, but an emergency gig. Here we have a bunch of LEDs in various colors, so that. Um, I can run warning lights or what have you. Um, there's a tool that that connector style takes. Um, it's a very, very cool gadget. Um, you can see in there that when I close it, the teeth come in and then they, we, they crush it until you get to a point and then it won't let, then it'll let go and open. So, uh, very good tool. Uh, this one uh, I've had for a couple of decades now. Uh, fuse holder. I've seen these used in airplanes. Actually, I've seen a picture of um, several airplanes with this, I think, this exact fuse holder um, in it. I'm not using fuses. I'm using circuit breakers uh, throughout. Um, but if you are going to use fuses, this is not a bad one. It does have LEDs to let you know which fuse blew. So that's probably worth something. And then here's a bus bar. This is actually a marine bus bar um, that I bought to add some things to my boat. And I couldn't get the top off really quickly one-handed. So you can see lots of screws. This is eh, not super heavy, but heavier than I'd like. And I'll probably make my own bus bar out of some copper strip or something, and that will work. So this is the beginnings, and this isn't even all of it. There's tons more stuff um, to go into the airplane uh, by the time it's done electrically, but this is the start of it, and this is kind of the way I'm doing it. And, um, you know, I I've read a lot of different publications. Um, I I've, I've thumbed through a bunch, about three or four different um, manuals um, on how to wire aircraft and it's some of its really good information um, some of it I think is rooted in the 1970s and uh, probably needs to be updated because uh, we don't do that anymore nobody does that anymore um, and I and at least one of the articles I read they barely barely touch on corrosion and you just you just can't understand how many times uh, over the years that I've been reading uh, websites and build logs and, and all of that and some guy says well you know I did this with all crimp connectors and or you know I followed this guy's you know logic behind using this style of connector and what whatever and then you know two years down the road um, Three years down the road, uh, I have a pr I have electrical problems, and the uh, you know whatever doesn't you know my something doesn't work, or my fuel pumps aren't coming on, or whatever. And most of the time, it ends up being corrosion or a bad connection caused by um, the 
a bat, you know, a cold solder joint or a solder joint that has cracked or um, or otherwise become compromised because of the vibration and temperature changes in an aircraft, um, or you know, crimps that were not heat shrunk and therefore you know water was able to you know moisture was able to get in there and over time uh, it just corrodes. So uh, my philosophy with all of this stuff is Tefzel wire. Um, absolute and maybe marine wire for some of it because marine wires tend specifically to avoid corrosion. I believe Tefzel is too, but but marine wire 100% tend ready to go for corrosion. So marine grade wire, awesome stuff, um, especially for the higher amp circuits. Heat shrink on everything. I don't have any on the table here, but I have many many sizes of heat shrink, and I use the living crap out of it. Good switches, uh, although switches can be, you know, changed out if they become in op for whatever reason or they get wonky on you. Switches are pretty easy to change out. Um, but still, you want good ones. And crimped, not soldered, connections pretty much throughout with some notable exceptions. And I'm not going to get into those exceptions right now because everybody has a different opinion, but I'm just going to tell you that I, uh, having dealt with solder, uh, for decades in uh, high vibration, high temperature change environments. I hate solder and uh, it, it just does not belong in any kind of performance vehicle and in my mind every aircraft is a performance uh, vehicle. So that's about it. Um, I'm gonna um, kind of put this all away and then I'll you know we'll, we'll cut over and, and look at what I'm do, trying to do with the panel and uh, and kind of go through that and then uh, I'll be right back all right sports fans and we're back I have moved most of the electronic stuff off of the desktop here uh, not my work area it's my wife's work area and at some point I have to give it back to her uh, something about the uh, earlier that I didn't mention is there's a lot of marine stuff out there that will work fine for the average home builder, uh, but use your best judgment. I, I'm doing things the way I know work, and this should not be interpreted as the way to do things. As a matter of fact, I'm very open to other people's experiences on how to do things and what they have specifically seen happen. Now. I don't really care if you don't like this style switch or that style connector or whatever because you think there could be a problem. Uh, I only care if you've actually seen a problem and it's actually been a problem and you are trying to help me out to avoid having an issue down the road. So that said, let's look at this, uh, this what might one day be a panel. This is the panel out of the project airplane as received. And as you can see, it is a very simple foam and uh, fiberglass panel uh, construction. Super easy. Um, now, I'm going to start out by saying that uh, it's not particularly light. It's not as light as I thought it would be. So I am probably going to go to this style. Um, honeycomb, this is a Nomex honeycomb 8th inch um, core with fiberglass uh, vacuum bagged on both sides and it is light and it is stiff and it is exceedingly strong and crush resistant. So that, my friends, is probably what I'm going to use for my panel and I may actually use it for some of the interior um, armrest and side pieces and that sort of thing it just depends on what this stuff ends up costing me in time and to some degree money okay so as you can see I have two tablet covers on here the tablets are being charged or you know the seven inch ones in my flight bags I use it all the time. and uh, the 10 inch ones somewhere being charged I'm sure my son has it playing with it or was playing with it uh, and we have the switch panel that we saw last time right there. Okay, yeah, this, I'm probably actually not gonna use a panel laid out like this. 
um, on an aluminum. Um, uh, this is actually this might be plastic. Um, you know, whatever it is, I'm not going to use a pre-assembled setup like this, but I will use this style of switches, and I will be using circuit breakers. Probably not waterproof circuit breakers. I don't I don't know if I see the need for that, but um, whatever. Um, so let's get into it. Over here, we will have a seven or ten inch tablet, uh, Android, probably a Samsung because that's my brand. That's how I get down. And uh, this will be the main avionics uh, flight instruments, all of that. This will be linked to an uh, Talos avionics for or fly sense pro pardon me fly sense pro uh, with angle of attack and all that cool stuff so we're going to put that on here um, it run all of its um, pitot tubes and temperature senders and all of that and this will be my only uh, or my primary flight instruments uh, there will be no steam gauges uh, in this plane whatsoever in the center here uh, i will have my radios currently i'm looking at the microware the the one that's two and a quarter, whatever it is. Um, looking at a micro air uh, receiver or transmitter and uh, an audio panel and or an ICOM, um, I think it's uh, 120, I, I forget which ICOM, but an, an ICOM radio. And then uh, a transponder, Probably the Stratus, um, this you know Stratus everybody uses uh, the exper the version for experimental aircrafts uh, here and then up here uh, will be the uh, engine information systems display uh, that will be linked to the EFI ECU and that will give us pretty much everything we need to know about the engine. Over here will be a seven inch tablet which will have the um, four, well, I use the Droid EFB, not four flight, but we'll have basically four flight running on it and um, run to a Stratix ADSB in and out, or pardon me, in receiver with its AHERS as a backup AHERS in case that unit goes down. We have this unit, we switch over to AHERS, no problem. And it's our backup instruments. Uh, worst comes worse, we go to the cell phone and uh, hope for the best. So uh, on the co-pilot side, pretty much not going to have anything over here except for maybe the microphone jacks, you know, right here. Uh, maybe, maybe some other um, uh, random stuff. I, I, I don't know. Uh, it's not particularly hard to reach this side from the pilot seat, but I'm a big proponent of um, not having to stretch, reach, or otherwise um, think when uh, for important systems. All of the switches, uh, which will be this style switch here, all of the switches should be between between these two displays on a nice even line right here with their circuit breakers. Um, maybe in here, I, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do the circuit breakers yet. But uh, as I lay it out, we'll see. So this will be main power alternator, um, or pardon me, master power alternator, ECU, fuel pumps, transfer pump, lights, avionics, should be it. Down below here, there will be a either a rotary dial switch or a, a momentary on-off on switch which will be for the aileron reflexor um, motor and that will have a linear or string pot on it to determine position which will be run through the ECU and uh, displayed on the engine um, on the digital information systems as a percentage of aileron reflex from 0 to 100 so that um, as, you, as we fly, we know where the reflexor is and how much reflex we have in the ailerons. 
the same thing would be is going to be true for the um, uh, we'll have a I may or may not have a mixture control knob um, that which will allow us to add or subtract fuel from the ECU I, I don't actually see a need for it but um, I am considering it um, so that uh, you know for some reason um, you know I just feel like maybe we can run a little bit leaner I can lean it out whatever uh, that would also be displayed as a percentage on the ECU. Uh, here um, we would have pretty much nothing in front of the throttle. Um, so, uh, so that's that. On this side we would have the uh, AEM AFR um, gauge that can be seen from both seats and it's very important information but it's not hypercritical and needs to be in a center and then uh, I'm considering an autopilot um, and it switches in in this corner here and uh, and that's about it you know so um, not a particularly complicated panel and not I mean, it's gonna be expensive I think um, all thing all said and done but um, it should be what I want what I need and nothing else uh, I am going to be using the Infinity Stick Grips. Uh, we can dig into that at another time. I don't have them yet. I haven't ordered them. Um, I'm kind of debating on some different formats. Uh, definitely I'll have the electronic trim, um, the push to talk, and a couple other um, odds and ends, on, um, or not odds and ends, a couple of other functions on each stick grip that as they make sense and are specific uh, to my, my little aircraft. Um, I am using the Corvair motor. I am fuel injecting it. I am, you know, running a, a, a couple of different um, systems that are proven in um, spades in a lot of other formats but I'm not sure that they're being used well actually I know for a fact that they that the AM Xfinity or the Infinity ECU is being used in an aircraft and that is probably the ECU I'm going to go with I did show you the DTA ECU from the touring car earlier that is something I already have just in case there is an issue getting and in, uh, an ADM Infinity ECU down the road or a dash or something like that, I have something so that I can get flying. From here, uh, I do have this false panel that I'm mocking things up on and I'm going to continue forward with it. I'm waiting on foam and fiberglass and a couple other things. I need to drive down to Aircraft Spruce and pick them up. I need to make a day trip down there and uh, just make it happen. I'm also I uh, need to get the engines torn down and get them over to the machine shop so I can get parts ordered for those uh, fairly soon. I would really, really like to be flying the aircraft um, next year, maybe this time, maybe a little later, um, but, uh, but we'll see. Right now, the next step is to get the aircraft on its wheels and um, once the aircraft, I mean, pardon me, I need to get it off of its wheels and onto a roller cart so that I can have it down at working level and be able to um, wire it, plumb it. I got brake lines to run, I have brake master cylinders to, um, to make work, and I have all of the pedal assemblies um, to redo. Uh, there'll be a video on this probably next week, but I'm fairly convinced that I'm going to not mount the um, pedals to the canard as plans dictate but to build a structure for the pedals so that the canard can be removed with just a couple of linkages pulled and not have the pedals and the brakes and everything else um, on them. So uh, working on that, trying to figure that out and um, I'm also trying to keep everything as light as I possibly can and um, you know, going forward as, as quickly as I can, um, as safely and as efficiently as I can. That's about it. Um, I apologize if this seems a little bit um, random and um, yeah, I'm not really a video guy, but uh, pictures and video really help, um, at least 
sometimes, and me writing it out uh, is probably not optimal. As always, I really appreciate everyone paying attention to this, and any feedback that can be given uh, would be great. I listen to all of it. I may not like it, and I may not uh, be super receptive to it, but I do listen, and, uh, and I do take advice uh, fairly well. Enjoy your evenings or days or wherever you are in the world, and um, we'll be back very soon. Thank you.